Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Nassim McDermott, um, and I am here to talk to you about um, colorectal health and colorectal screening today. So colon cancer screening, why do we do it? Um, one of the main things that we all need to know about is that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer cause of death in the United States and the third most uh, common cancer diagnosis in both men and women. Colorectal screening is very effective because it helps us prevent colon cancer by doing different ways of screening, which we're going to go over. Nowadays, our guidelines have changed. About two or three years ago, we moved on from age 50 to age 45. But um, up to two or three years ago, we recommended that everybody without any family history of colon cancer to start colon screening at age 50. Nowadays, we see more and more uh, people coming in at age 45 because we are able to detect this cancer a little bit earlier and we can prevent it sooner. Some of the risk factors for colon cancer, um, obviously one of the biggest one is gonna be family history. Um, so normally, we have, if we have a first degree family member, so mom, dad, or siblings with colon cancer, obviously we are at higher risk for colon cancer. Or if we have two second degree uh, family members with colon cancer, we're considered higher risk for colon cancer. Uh, cigarette smoking obviously adds the risk for colon cancer. Um, obesity, gallbladder removal, um, physical inactivity, um, um, any type of abdominal radiation can increase the risk of colon cancer. Uh, if uh, a, a female has a cancer of uterus or ovaries before age 50, that can be a risk factor for, um, for colon cancer. People with inflammatory bowel disease, so Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, we tend to screen them every one to two years because they are at higher risk for colon cancer as well. And also our African-American population, um, they have a higher risk uh, for colon cancer. So how does this colorectal cancer start? So basically we have these growths in the colon that come about, they are called polyps. And uh, these polyps, they start at a few millimeter in size. And that's one of the reasons why we recommend colorectal screening because we can find these polyps, we can remove them through colonoscopy, and we won't let them grow into what may become colon cancer. So the polyps start at very like tiny few millimeter growths. And if they are not um, if you don't have any ways of screening the colon and they go um, undiagnosed, they can grow into a colon tumor. So again, a little bit more about colon polyp. Again, is a small clump of cells, which is in the lining of the colon. Um, most of the polyps are harmless. The harmless ones are called hyperplastic polyps, but there are a few of them um, like adenomas or um, uh, sessile serrated polyps um, that can become over time, those clumps of cells can become um, precancerous and develop into colon cancer. So um, again, remember that a screening by colonoscopy with polyp removal can prevent colorectal cancer before it even starts. So we can catch these polyps as are very small. We can completely remove them through colonoscopies. And that way, that's how we prevent colon cancer. So um, these are some of the pictures of different type of polyps that we find when we do the colonoscopies. They do come in different shapes. Um, they can be quite flat and very subtle sometimes. Uh, some of them can have a little stalk to them. Um, we have different classification systems. Um, when we do the colonoscopies, we classify them in our report. So that way we know um, at the baseline what kind of polyps our patient has. Um, but you can see that they come in different shapes and form. And most of these um, pretty much up to about two centimeter, which is pretty big in the polyp world, we can remove via colonoscopies successfully and entirely.
when our patients come to our office and we talk to them about colorectal screening, um, we do give them um, a little bit of a kind of variety of options. We go over all of these options. So um, the American College of Gastroenterology 2021 guidelines on the colorectal cancer screening explain differences between our recommended tests. Um, and we, we're going to go over those um, because a lot of patients do have questions about why colonoscopy, you know, versus fit test or the, the stool test. So we want to kind of clarify that. We want to go over, um, you know, why one rather than the other. So everybody has that information. Um, colonoscopy. Colonoscopy is a one-step test that looks for growth, which like we talked about the polyps in the entire length of colon. So the, our colon is our large intestine and it, um, it's a, basically a very long tube. And when we do the colonoscopies, we basically screen the entire colon from the rectum all the way to what's called cecum, which is the end of the, the large intestine. We scan the entire length. And if there is any polyps as we're doing the colonoscopies, we can remove them right there and then. There are other tests that can be offered to the patients, um, and those are stool tests. So we have FIT tests, and then we have multi-target stool DNA tests. So with the FIT test, the fecal immunochemical test, or the FIT test, it detects hidden blood in the stool. So they are looking for hidden blood in the stool. So if somebody has, um, say, like a very large polyp or, or maybe even colon cancer, um, there is some um, basically... There's going to be a little bit of a blood in the stool that they may not see grossly, but we can detect that with the FIT test. And then also with the DNA test, that's yet another way of looking um, at the colon in, in a more non-invasive way, if you compare it with the colonoscopy, um, that this, the, the DNA test, um, if, if the DNA test or the FIT test are positive, we're going to recommend the patient to get a colonoscopy to kind of see what's going on. So that's one of the drawbacks of these uh, stool tests, because if they come back negative, well, that's good. But if they come back positive, we still are going to have to go to a step one, which is the colonoscopy to kind of see what's going on inside the colon. Uh, if there's a large polyp that's causing the positive test, if there is uh, already a growth there that we need to worry about. So those are the, the drawbacks of those, uh, the FIT test and our, our DNA-based test. When we talk about the cancer screening, um, colonoscopy is a powerful cancer prevention tool. Um, it is the only screening test that allows both identification and removal of the polyp. Any other test that we talk about is inferior to colonoscopies because a lot of them, um, um, you know, they can have false positives, they can have false negatives. A lot of them will lead eventually into colonoscopies um, because, uh, you know, when we do the fit test, we, a lot of times we get a false positive. So we still have to subject our patient to a colonoscopy. So the number one test that we have and the best tool that we have to screen the colon is going to be our colonoscopy. And um, one of the biggest benefits of it is that uh, we both detect the problem and we can address it right there and then um, during the colonoscopy. So this is just a picture, kind of a picture, like a sketch of how the colonoscopy works. This is the colon, which is a large intestine, and our colonoscope is just a long tube with a light source at the end of it, and it has different channels at the tip of the, the colonoscope that we can actually push through our instruments, and those are designed for us to remove different kind of polyps that we detect. So we, after the patient is sedated, uh, we go ahead and we insert the camera scope through the rectum and the light source will guide us um, to navigate the colon and we're going to we'll push the, the or navigate the, the colonoscope all the way down to the area that's called cecum. Some of the biggest questions that come in um, when the patients come to the office to talk about a screening colonoscopy is what to expect. So one of the things is obviously the bowel prep. Um, and that's the biggest question. Nowadays, we do have some improved bowel preps. Um, a few months ago, we came out with bowel preps that are all pill based. So there is nothing to drink. So that's the biggest step for our patients. They really like that because a lot of people don't like drinking a lot of fluid, but um, some sort of a bowel prep is required. So everybody has to go through the bowel prep. Um, there's going to be some diet modification the day prior to the colonoscopy to basically clean the colon 
colon so we can have a nice clean field of view so that way we can detect the smallest polyps in the colon and remove them. The procedure is minimally invasive and it's painless. Um, our patients are sedated during the procedure, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how many polyps the patient has. And um, basically it involves patient taking a nice deep nap as we screen the colon and remove the polyps that, that we find. After the colonoscopy, um, the recovery is pretty short. Um, Basically, patients are moved over to the recovery area. They wake up within a few minutes. Um, we normally ask them to take it a little easy that day, not to drive around, not to work. But other than that, they can pretty much go back to their normal activities, really no big um, modification there. Um, some people may feel um, some slight bloating or gas because we do need to introduce some air to um, open up the colon wall so we can find, uh, detect, and remove these polyps if they have any. Uh, but most patients um, wake up and they don't even you know, realize they had their test done. Um, but like I said, the, the, you know, the most uncomfortable thing they can feel is just a slight bloating and gas after the colonoscopy. And then um, most of our patients obviously will have a follow-up appointment with us to go over what we have found to go over the pathology so that way we can also discuss the inner wall for their next colonoscopy and um, that way we can answer any questions that they may have. <laughs>